This is an AI agent, and this is a virtual obstacle course. The AI has one goal, to complete the course as fast as possible. Here is the solution it came up with. It's not exactly the most elegant path to the goal, but it's still impressive considering this AI agent started with zero knowledge. Let me explain. This AI was trained using a technique called neuroevolution, and just like the name suggests, it has to do with evolving brains, specifically neural network brains. I'm sure that some of you are familiar with these, but for those of you who are not, here's a brief rundown. In many ways, neural networks are like real brains. Both have neurons that receive and transmit information to other neurons, and both have connections with different levels of strength. The major difference is that real brains operate using complicated chemistry and electricity, while neural networks just use numbers. For example, a single neuron in a neural network receives input data as numbers. These numbers are multiplied by their respective connection weights before being summed together. The neuron applies an activation function, and then passes on the data through outgoing connections. We can group these neurons into layers. One of these layers is called the input layer, where we feed in information to the network, and one is called the output layer, where we receive the network's calculation. This particular type of neural network is called a feedforward network, since all of the information flows in just one direction. And in case you were curious, here's what the previous agent's brain looks like. It only needed 12 neurons to finish the obstacle course. So that's the neuro part of neuroevolution. The evolution part has to do with the way we train the network to solve the problem. We'll be using genetic algorithms, a technique inspired by natural selection. I actually covered genetic algorithms in detail in the previous video of this series, but here's a quick recap. A genetic algorithm allows us to take a pool of possible solutions, select the best according to a fitness function, and create a new generation of solutions by combining and mutating the top performers. This whole procedure is repeated until the problem is solved. In order to make this technique work with neural networks, we need a way to convert them into genetic code. Provided that the structure of our neural networks don't change, all we need to do is convert each weight in the network into a binary number, arrange them in a consistent order, and just like that, we have a genetic representation that we can plug into the genetic algorithm. Now that we have a good idea of how neuroevolution works, let me tell you a little bit more about the obstacle course from before. During training, I had 64 agents simultaneously going through the course each generation. Their only goal was to reach the finish line to the far right, but to get there, they needed to get past the obstacles along the way. To achieve this, each agent is equipped with some senses, three sight lines, and an internal compass pointing towards the exit. Let me show you the training footage.
As you can see, after some time, the agents become pretty good at navigating the course, even though their style of locomotion is unique. Of course, for more difficult problems, we would need to use bigger and more complex neural networks, or change our approach entirely. The specific type of neuroevolution we've been using is called conventional neuroevolution, and it's where we only evolve the connection weights in the network. There are many techniques that can also evolve the structure and size of the network as well. This means that the AI could more easily optimize its brain to solve the problem. In a future video, I'll be taking a look at NEAT, an algorithm that can achieve this. See you then.